So in our last video for chapter six, and this will end 6.7 as well, I just want to take a couple more minutes to go over a few more examples using negative exponents. So in our first problem, we have three different variables that have negative exponents. So the thing that you have to keep in mind when you're looking at these negative exponents is what is that negative exponent really on? What's the base? So when we look at this, then this negative five is only on the x. The x is the base, that's it. So when we're moving, we're only moving the x with its exponent. The same thing with the w and the x over here. All right, so this w um, to the fourth is gonna stay where it is. So we're gonna have a set of parentheses where the w to the fourth is gonna be on top, it's not moving anywhere, but this x to the negative five is gonna become x to the five, but on the bottom. So remember, we're taking the reciprocal with our negative exponents. Right now it's on the top, now we're moving it to the bottom. In our next set, both of these have negative exponents. So both of them are gonna to move to the bottom with their bases, so each exponent, and as we move it to the bottom, it'll cancel out that negative sign. And what are, we gonna, what are we gonna be left with on the top? Just a one. So we have w to the fourth divided by x to the fifth, and that is multiplied by one over w squared times x to the fourth. So now we can go ahead and just use our multiplication, okay? So in our multiplication, w to the fourth times one is just gonna equal w to the fourth. And then we have an x to the fifth here times an x to the fourth here. So that's going to give us an x to the ninth, correct? So when we're multiplying variables that are the same, we add the exponents. 5 plus 4 equals 9. And then this w squared can't be combined or multiplied with anything else because there's no other w's on the bottom. So we're just going to have a w squared on the bottom. Are we done? What do you think? No, because we can still use the quotient rule here. We have a w to the fourth and a w squared. So we can use the quotient rule to go ahead and cancel out a couple of those w's, correct? So we have four w's on top and two w's on the bottom. Four minus two is gonna leave us with two w's on the top and then our nine x's on the bottom. So again, we are use, we were using negative exponents, we were using our product rule, and we used our quotient rule all in the same problem. How about this next one? We have three z to the negative three, all of that is squared. So again, remember what the base is. It might be easy to say, okay, well this three z to the negative three all needs to move to the bottom. But this exponent right here is only on the z. Okay, so the, the, the two out here, the exponent out here is on everything inside, but this negative three is only on the z. So keep that in mind. So again, you can work through this a couple different ways, and I'll go ahead and um, show that to you. You can go ahead and have the three on top and then move the z to the negative three. Go ahead and take the reciprocal. It goes to the bottom, it cancels out that negative, so we'll have z to the 3 on the bottom. And then all of that goes to the 2. So 3 times 3 equals 9. And then z to the 3rd, and then to the 2nd power, 3 times 2 is z to the 6th. And we can't simplify that any further than it already is. So that would be... The result for that but I did say that we can do that two different ways so I'm gonna go ahead and show you and then you can kind of see whichever seems easiest to you or makes the most sense to you we can go ahead and apply this exponent to each part right now if you wanted to so we can use our power rule now so 3 times 3 is going to equal 9 and z to the negative third all to the 2 negative 3 times 2 is going to be z to the negative 6. Well, because this is a still a negative exponent, what do we have to do? This negative 6 is only on the z, 
So only the Z is going to move. So the 9 is going to stay on top, and then we're going to move our Z to the bottom, and our negative 6 will then become a 6. We'll cancel out that negative. So either way you do it, if you want to use... Um, your quotient rule, your power rule, whichever way you want to do it first or not use your quotient, but um, your negative rule, your negative exponent rule, whichever one you want to use first, either way will work. So whatever makes the most sense to you. In our last example, we have x to the negative 7 and x to the negative 3. So remember, taking the reciprocal means flipping, right? So right now, our x to the negative 3 is on the bottom. So where is it going to move to? it's going to move to the top. And as we move it, we get rid of that negative sign. X to the 7, or next to the negative 7 is on the top, so where is it going to go? It's going to go to the bottom, and as it moves to the bottom, it drops that negative sign. So now we have x to the 3rd over x to the 7th. We have, we've done what we're supposed to do here. We canceled out those negative signs because we don't like negative exponents. Are we done with this? No, we can apply our quotient rule in this one. So if you wanted to, you could subtract here and do 3 minus 7, which is a negative 4. So you would end up with x to the negative 4, and you would know that you need to flip that, right? That's going to give you 1 over x to the 4. Or what we learned in our last section in 6.5, you can work your way up. So 7 minus 3 is 4, and since our bigger number is on the bottom, we know we're going to be left with um, the exponents on the bottom and just the 1 on the top. So these are just a few of the problems that you'll see um, in the book, and hopefully, again, this will get you started on the homework for this section.